we are back on the cytotoxic T cells. What else do they do? Just like this, they're killing the cell that is infected with a virus or a pathogen. They also do the same thing for the cancer cells. So take care of the cancer cells, cytotoxic and NK. Take care of the virus infected cell, cytotoxic and NK. And the third thing that they do is helping help in killing. It's not really a good help, but anyways, that's what they do. They think they're helping. Help in killing graft cells. So if I'm a patient who received a kidney or who received a lung transplant or who received a liver transplant, that transplant over the time is going to be rejected, right? It has a life. That rejection is done with a combination of helper T cells and the cytotoxic T cells. So that is also where they work. So just very quickly, this is not a lecture about the graft rejection, but just very quickly, because we're talking about the T cells and cytotoxic and their function, how does the graft rejection occur? Graft rejection can occur due to three things. Number one, donor cells, donor cells. That means the, if I get a kidney from a person A, A's kidney cells, or the cells in there, the lymphocytes and the macrophages and the dendritic cell present in that person A's kidney, Donors cells presenting donors proteins to recipients lymphocytes is one mechanism through which interaction occurs and the killing occurs. Second is donors cell presenting recipients proteins on their surface on their uh, antigen presenting areas MIC1 or MIC2 activating the host response and killing the cell. And the third one is recipient cell showing donor proteins what does that mean when the donor cell donor tissue comes into our body the tissue sheds proteins so a kidney or a lung or a liver or, or whatever else is transplanted tissue a bone marrow or bone marrow is actually a totally different situation that tissue sheds proteins it sheds mhc1 it sheds mhc2 and other the cell die in a tissue right those shed proteins are picked up by our body cells, the T cells, helper cells in the cytotoxic. And then when they become activated, they kill those cells. So three mechanisms, don donor cell, lymphocytes, presenting donor proteins. Donor cell, lymphocytes of donor and APCs, presenting our proteins to us. So you would say here, as a good medical student, you'll say, well, we are immune and non-reactive to our own cell antigens. So you, you'll say to me that, hey man, you're wrong. Our body does not react to our own tissue. But here is a problem. We're talking about donor cell presenting our proteins to us. So for us, this becomes foreign because the MHC1 and 2 present on the donor cell is different. So when our lymphocytes interact with the MHC1 or 2 of the donor cell presenting our tissue protein to us, our lymphocytes become fooled our APCs become fooled, our system become fooled, and it thinks that, oh, this may be a foreign protein. And that is how it, it starts attacking us. So donor cell, donor protein, donor cell, our protein, our cell, donor protein. These are three mechanisms through which the cytotoxic killing and helper T cell killing occurs. But that does occur. So this is another function of the cytotoxic T cell. They help in rejecting the graft. Also, it's not a help again. It's really a very bad thing, but that is what they do. So that is the function of the T cells, uh, the cytotoxic T cells. Now let's go back to the helper T cell. One more function and we are home free for the helper site. The other one, the other function is humoral response. So remember this is all cellular response. Why do I say this is all cellular response? All the actors here, we saw macrophages, we saw cytotoxic T cells, we saw natural killer cells. All the actors here are cells that are killing pathogens or the other cells. This is a cellular mechanism. Now let's talk about humoral mechanism. This will actually be a good segue for our next lecture as well, which is about the B cells. So it's, a, it's a good thing. So let's talk about it. Now let's say that instead of, I'm going to erase this one, and I'm going to activate the same helper T cell in a slightly different way. The whole mechanism is going to become different. So now what is happening is, 
here sits a cute little naive T cell. One of my, f my students says that when I teach immunology and I talk about these nice cute cells, I talk as if they are my friends. And yes, yeah, they are our friends. They are not just my friends. They are all of our friends. If these cells were not doing their function, and they've done, the, in, in the mice they do studies in which they knock off the cells, or they knock off their receptors, or they knock off their mechanisms of action. And what, they, what happens is that the little uh, tiny baby mice, they are killed very soon by infections or by autoimmune diseases. So yes, these cells are very, very helpful friends of ours. And while we are talking and listening and helping and, and doing this fun stuff, they are actually at work and they are right now protecting our body. So let's talk about naive T cell once more. In this particular case, we have, um, let's make another APC, maybe a dendritic cell or a B cell. You know B cell is APC as well. So anyways, here is another APC. Here is another pathogen. This pathogen is probably not intracellular. It is sitting around in the humor. Humor means fluids. So it is moving around, having fun, engaged. Uh, look at his eyes and look at his face. He's all smiley and happy. Now this pathogen got taken up by an APC and that APC again you know that it would be presenting that pathogen or piece of it on its MSC2 um, thing. Same exact mechanism. So T cell receptor here on the naive uh, CD4 connection and then you know that uh, instead of IL-12 now so here is a difference this is where the difference is. Instead of IL-12, we got IL-4. Now, where did the IL-4 come from is not known. We can say, in some, uh, in some studies I've seen that they say IL-4 is coming from the APC. In other studies, what they do is they remove this APC. They say that the pathogen is connected pathogen is attached to the T cell receptor. So this is that happy pathogen. And somewhere IL-4 came from, don't know where. So that, remember in my teaching I make that cell like this. It's a ninja cell. Sorry, uh, with all apologies to the ninjas. It's a ninja cell which we do not know what it is and it releases IL-4. So IL-4 comes from somewhere, either from the APC or from the cell. And the both theories are different. If it is APC, then it presents the pathogen and has IL-4. Or the pathogen is independently uh, connected to the T cell, and then IL-4 comes from some cells. Once the IL-4 comes, the naive T cell will be converted to T helper 2 cell. That is a function here. So now what does that mean? When it becomes T helper 2, that means the genes in this cell will open differently. Remember, a naive T cell can become helper 1 or helper 2. It's only a matter of what genes are open. And what genes are open, what does that mean? It's only a matter of if it is IL-12 that acted on it, or is it IL-4 IL that acted on it. So in this particular case, when the IL-4 acts on it, the IL-4 causes the DNA those genes to become open which will do following things. Number one, this cell becomes T helper 2. That means it would start releasing IL-4 and IL-5. So that is one. It would start releasing interleukin-4 and interleukin-5. The other thing is it would start displaying the uh, co-stimulant of the type that needs to interact with the B cells, B cells. So that is the CD40L, CD40 ligand will be shown. So one thing that I forgot to mention in the other one, and I'll just say it here, there is a B27 and B28 and B7 interaction as well. We'll talk about that in a second then. So CD40L and B28. B28, actually CD28. So CD28, CD40 ligand, interleukin 4 and 5 
are now being expressed on this surface. That is a T helper 2 cell. What does it do? It works with a B cell. So let's make a B cell here. It works with a B cell. So this is B cell. This B cell was not doing much. But remember, B cells can express IgM, IgM, and IgD simultaneously on their surface. So when they are, these are the two immunoglobulins that can be manufactured in a B cell at the same time. No other immunoglobulin can be manufactured in conjunction with other. For example, if we have IgG, then the B cell will only make IgG. If we have IgA, then B cell will only make A. If we have E, then it would only make E. It is only the IgM and IgD that can be expressed simultaneously on the surface of a B cell. And this is a USMLE question, and you should know this anyways. So here, we've gotten the IgM, and we've gotten the IgD. Both of those somehow have become loaded with this pathogen as well. So there are going to be some cells that are not loaded with it, and there are some cells that are loaded with it. Why? Because these receptors are unique, and they can catch unique pathogen antigens. So it is not necessary that every B cell will catch them. Only a few B cells would have caught them. So the pathogen is looking downward, saying, oh my god, the B, B cell has now connected with me. Now this B cell that has gotten a pathogen attached to it will become active by what? IL-4 and IL-5. What is their action? What is the uh, action of the IL-4? IL-4 would cause B cell uh, growth. Growth means that it would start making immunoglobulins, it would start proliferating, it would start making more and more of the proteins. Differentiation means it would start becoming specific and it would start having more of the B cells itself. So the end result is going to be bigger cell. These are called plasma cells because their, their uh, plasma is now bigger and it has immunoglobulin and manufacturing is occurring, plus many of this type of cell. So there is a clonal expansion and there is a there is manufacturing of the immunoglobulins. Now, so that is one function here. The other function of IL-4 and 5, when I see many students confused, IL-4 also helps a B cell for class switching. Class switching from what to what? All B cells in the beginning express IgM. That is their first reaction. And remember this, this is a USMLE question, or actually many questions. A B cell can express IgM without any help from the helper cells. So let's say this whole mechanism was pathological. This whole mechanism was failed. It was not working. Pathogen came into the body. The patient has AIDS. Patient's helper T cells count is very low. Helper T cells are not helping. What is that patient going to have in their body, in their human? What immunoglobulin? IgM. Why? B cell can interact with the pathogen and produce IgM. There is no problem. They can do that. However, to produce IgG, to produce IgD, to produce, uh, sorry, to produce IgG, A and E, B cells will need the help of helper system. And how would they need? IL-4 helps the B cell switch the antibodies from M to G and E. G and E. And IL-5 helps converted to A, IgA. So, and these are, I think we just covered three or four USMLE questions here. IL-5 class switches to IgA, IL-4 class switches to IgE and IgG.